A star exploded a thousand years ago, creating the Crab Nebula. And new data from the James Webb Space Telescope is poised to blast that theory out of the water. NASA's amazing Webb Telescope has made numerous discoveries, causing scientists to rethink a lot of what we know about the cosmos, and now it's turned its attention to our own galaxy. The Crab Nebula in the constellation Taurus might be a different type of supernova instead of what it was originally thought to be. Perhaps it could be something called an iron core collapse supernova. Crab Nebula plays a huge role in astronomy because it was one of the first and earliest observed phenomena that we still can observe to this very day. Hi everybody, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm an experimental cosmologist, and I'm also the Chancellor's Distinguished Professor of Physics at the University of California, San Diego, where among other things in my research, I use the Crab Nebula. Today we'll be diving deep into a recent study of this fascinating object using NASA's James Webb Space Telescope and how it's upending what we thought about this ancient old crustacean. By the way, what's the difference between a rundown bus station and a lobster with breast implants? One's a crusty bus station, and the other's a busty crustacean. <laughs> Crab Nebula is a supernova remnant, the leftover material from an explosion that occurred in the year 1054, almost a thousand years ago. Through a telescope, it looks like a crab, and it's also known as Taurus A because it's in the constellation Taurus, a zodiac constellation. Hashtag Taurus. In the 1700s, an astronomer named Charles Messier compiled a list of all these objects that would interfere with his study of comets. It was this early study into what's known as systematic effects, things that confuse scientists into thinking they're seeing what they want to see, when in reality they're seeing something different. Back then, if you discovered a comet, you became famous. Think of Halley's Comet and others. An old Chucky boy was trying to discover as many comets as possible, and he didn't want to get confused into thinking he saw one when in fact he had just seen a nebula, <laughs> which are actually sometimes much more interesting than dirty snowball ice balls that are floating around like icebergs in the outer solar system, sometimes making their appearance, causing fears of doom and gloom to appear on Earth. So Messier called this object M1. It's the first entry in his catalog. It's a beautiful object to see, but you can only see it if you have a modestly powerful telescope. The remnant that we see today is an expanding shell of gas and dust and probably rocks just like these that you can get when you go to BrianKeating.com. This shell is caused by an outflowing wind powered by a pulsar, a rapidly spinning and highly magnetized neutron star. The explosion was so bright that if you were around in 1054, you wouldn't have cared about Netflix or TikTok. You'd be watching this supernova explosion even during the day. For centuries, scientists have been studying this supernova remnant and trying to understand the exact nature of the progenitor of the star that exploded producing this wonderful object. So how did it form? Traditionally, astronomers thought that the Crab Nebula resulted from a rare type of supernova called an electron capture supernova. There are many such objects, such as the one known as Supernova 2018ZD. In an electron capture supernova, a massive star runs out of fuel in its core and then collapses. This collapse triggers the electrons around the star's nuclei to be captured by protons, turning them into neutrons. This process releases a tremendous amount of energy, causing the star to explode. It's the inverse of beta decay. When a neutron decays into a proton, an electron, for charge conservation, you need to have equal and opposite charges for a neutron, and electron antineutrino. We've discussed neutrinos many times on this channel, and we will again in the future. But new data from the James Webb Space Telescope is casting doubt on the electron capture theory. These new studies examine the total kinetic energy of the ejected material and the progenitor star's mass. Now, for a long time, most astronomers believe that the explosion was relatively low in kinetic energy, and that aligns with the electron capture supernova hypothesis. However, inconsistencies with the observed pulsar motion and the rapid expansion of the Crab Nebula's gas and dust shell prompted more investigation. And that's where Webb comes in, because Webb's powerful infrared capabilities allow scientists to peer deeper into the nebula than ever before. Infrared light goes right through the dust. You can see that at sunset, the sun looks much more red, and that's because the blue light, the shorter wavelength light gets scattered away. But you can peer deeper and see more with the infrared when you're in a dusty environment. And the scientists saw the presence of silicon and oxygen, which are not typically produced in large quantities by electron capture supernovae. Advances in our theoretical understanding of iron core collapse supernova have revealed that such events can indeed produce low energy explosions. 
particularly when the stellar mass of the progenitor is sufficiently low. Now, the low energy nature of the supernova event combined with the progenitor star's lower mass suggests that this beautiful crab may have been a rare and unusual occurrence. The web findings suggest that the Crab Nebula may have originated from a different type of supernova altogether, an iron core collapse supernova. Here's what happens in an iron core collapse supernova. At the end of its life, a massive star fuses its core into elements. Now iron is the most stable element. And when the core runs out of fuel to fuse iron any further, it can no longer support the weight of the star's outer envelopes via its photon pressure from the fusion processes occurring within. it. That causes the core to collapse on itself, triggering a violent explosion that blows the star's outer layers into space. It also blows into space some iron as well. Iron core collapse supernovas are the most common type of supernova and responsible for producing many of the heavy elements heavier than iron that we see today. So if the Crab Nebula was indeed from an iron core collapse supernova, it would have played a significant role in enriching the interstellar medium in that part of the galaxy some 6,500 light years away from Earth. While the new Webb telescope data strongly suggests that the Crab Nebula originated from an iron core collapse supernova, more evidence is needed to confirm the hypothesis. Scientists are continuing to study the data from Webb and other telescopes, synthesizing together additional clues about this magnificent crustacean-like nebulous composition and its history and formation process. Scientists need to study more to understand the details of the event and its implications for our understanding of a supernova in general. The James Webb Space Telescope has a killer app, which is its ability to observe in the infrared spectrum, allowing scientists to probe deeper into the nebula's dusty regions, revealing new details about its structure and composition. Additionally, upcoming telescopes, such as the Giant Magellan Telescope, and hopefully the University of California's own 30-meter telescope, will provide even higher resolution observations that can shed further infrared light on the mysteries of the crab. Now, I mentioned at the very beginning that my group uses the Crab Nebula to study the polarization of the cosmic microwave background radiation. And we recently published a paper led by Kyohei Yamada that suggests there's something strange either going on with the Crab Nebula, the pulsar at its heart, perhaps its properties, this new dust scenario that we've discussed today, or something exotic called an axion. We don't know for sure and further data is needed and is ongoing with the Simons Array Telescope in Chile. So as we continue to study the Crab Nebula, astronomers across the wavelength range from infrared to visible light to even microwave background searching like I am doing with my group will be benefiting from research like this done by the Webb Telescope. If you're curious about the Crab Nebula and supernova in general, please watch my video about the biggest explosions in the universe since the Big Bang, and watch my interview with the James Webb Space Telescope's chief scientist, my friend, and Nobel Prize winner, John Mather. Click here.